Ladies and gentlemen, families, friends, and the graduating class of 2012, it is an absolute honor to be here today to represent this class. Really. And um, I'll let you know, when I was asked to, uh, when I was asked, when I was told <laughs> to uh, give this speech and represent this class here today, I was like, you know, I really don't know if I'm the person to represent this entire class today. I don't know. And you know, I was thinking, I wasn't there on the nasty Mondays or the, the, long, <laughs> the long nights at a sutan or I didn't, I didn't lose my phone like half of the people in this class, you know? Uh, I was thinking, I don't, I don't know. But then I realized, you know what? 95% of the people here are all from different parts of the world, and I am too. And therefore, I relate and I can identify. For the people that know me, you know that I always talk about my uh, superheroes, since we're talking about superheroes. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about Spider-Man, but I'm gonna talk about Superman, <laughs> all right? And uh, I always identified to Superman growing up, because, uh, not because I think I'm the strongest man on earth, or because I think I can save every single person I want, but because Superman had a weakness that I identified with. For example, I don't know how old you guys know, but Superman was from a different planet called Krypton, and he was raised on the planet Earth. And his whole life, he was thinking he had this identity crisis. He never knew exactly where he was from. He was battling internally. Am I human or am I Kryptonian? And I was thinking, you know what? That was actually his strength, because he realized that he had the strength of a million men from Krypton, and he had the emotions of the human. He cared. He wanted to protect people. And I realized, you know what? I'm kind of the same. Because, well, not that, you know, I'm from, <laughs> you know, but I, I have a cultural background. Um, I'm originally from the US, but my parents are from Togo. And I, when I was in the US, I was going to a French school. So you can see between France, Togo, West Africa, and, uh, and the US, it's like, where, where the hell am I from, right? Uh, <laughs> and I realized that, you know what? This is actually my weakness, but you can turn it into your strength. I would speak English. French, obviously, and it gives me the opportunity to speak different languages like Spanish and maybe German one day, but that's a pretty tough one. Um, and this is something that I wanted to transmit to the entire class today is take another look at your weakness because you might have the opportunity to turn it into strength. And it's something that's very important to me and to everybody here. And obviously no one wants someone who's good at everything. They want someone who's excellent at something. But if you have the chance to really turn a weakness into an opportunity, to a strength, is something that will set you apart from the competition. So moving on into the speeches coming out of Yada, obviously. And whether you were here because of the beautiful city, the prestigious school, the women, the beach, the men, I don't know, whatever it was, <laughs> but you know, we're all here and we all experienced something very unique, which was group work, <laughs> presentations, and case studies. And you guys know we all went through the sleepless nights and killing each other. Some of us are still alive, so we're here today. And I'm going to talk to you about my experience here working with my team, Dream Team. We're the Dream Team. Very, very, yeah, Dream Team, Ooh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Our team is composed of Filip from Germany, Lina from Russia, Inigo from Spain, Marisa from Panama, and myself from the US. So just from the countries, you can tell that, wow, there's a lot of cultural differences there, right? Now, we had a unique challenge, like most of the teams here. And our challenge was that we were a team of leaders. You had Philippe, was this, which was this uh, ex-football player from Germany, captain, used to scoring goals and just, ah, right? And then you had Lena, which was this incredible businesswoman from Russia who worked in Moscow in one of the top companies there and was worked her way up to the a deputy HR director. You had Inigo, who's a Spanish guy who owns a business, he's studying at the same time. You have Marisa, who worked in Sony for a number of years and is a very, is a, is a very good expert in her field. And you have myself, this American guy from all over the place. You know, I, I, I lived in France as well in the UK and I managed a few businesses in the UK and it's like, wow, this is gonna only go very well or very bad. And it went both ways. <laughs> As you can see, uh, there was a lot of cultural differences. We worked very, very hard. But again, it was a team of leaders. 
And so we thought that, you know what, we're going to give our best throughout the entire year and we're going to perform very well. And I'm very proud of this team. However, being a team of leaders, you're in a position where, okay, wow, we're all used to leading. Now what happens? Who steps up? Who steps down? How does it work? You can imagine it was a mess. But I'm, I'm very, very proud of this team. And we worked very, very hard. Very hard. And I'm pretty sure a lot of teams here can relate to the cultural differences, people being late, people coming on time, people working, not working, people going to parties, coming out to meetings drunk, hangover. <laughs> so I'm not even coming at all. I think, I think we, can all, we can all relate to that. And for me, what was interesting is that my goal coming to Yada was about getting the skill to persuade, persuasion skills. I wanted to be like uh, someone like Barack Obama, like Oprah Winfrey, that you can get in front of a crowd of people and be able to speak and people can feel the enthusiasm, the charisma, the energy on the tip of your fingers. And that's something that I wanted to do. And working with this team, I can tell you I had the opportunity to work on my persuasion skills because it wasn't easy. And it all comes down to the people we met here at the Yada, which was a treasure, as Lena usually says, people are treasure. And there's two people that I really want to talk about. And one would be Inigo, which is one of my team members, Inigo uh, Munoz. And Inigo is a Spanish guy, you know, very, very funny, funny, funny guy. Um, <laughs> He has a lot of enthusiasm and he's a hard worker. And you know, he was always coming late to meetings and stuff like that. He was starting his business and managing it. And it's, it's a lot of dedication because he had, he had a lot of commitments outside of work, but even here at Ayala, he was always committed and he would bring up his part of the work and he was a great member. So you would wish that a lot of people would have uh, the energy, charisma and motivation to write your own story like Inigo does. Because I believe that it's all about writing your own story. And your life is like an open book. Every single time there's a chapter. And in every chapter you have your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And it's up to you to grab that pen and write your story. Another person is Kangalani, who is also... Kangalani was a um, really cool guy. He is from Zimbabwe, and uh, you know, when he was here, he wasn't honestly the most open person here. He was a bit shy, and sometimes he was at the center of jokes. But there's something that you have to know about Kangalani, is that he didn't necessarily have the same upbringings that we did. He grew up from foster homes, and he was pretty much on his own growing up. But he financed himself through education. He financed himself through the Netherlands, at the university, and now here at Ayala. And he worked, he wrote his story. And today, he's sitting among us, on his own, with his whole new family, and he made it here. Okay. One last thing I want to say, just before I move into my speech, is uh, the idea of stereotypes. I know when we got here, we, all, we had these stereotypes of uh, Germans being very strict and on time and work efficient and the Spanish uh, that were just, yeah, whatever, you know? And it's so funny because we experienced a very huge culture mix when we got here. By the end of the year, the Spanish became the Germans, the Germans were late and it was all crazy. It's like, what happened, right? And, <laughs> and the Colombians, right? The Colombians in our team, they, they managed, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they managed to get here on time at parties. Uh, which was good. <laughs> no joking on, but for me, just to close this speech is leadership is a capacity to translate vision into reality. So members here of Yada 2012 graduating class, your mission here today is to write your own story. If the opportunity doesn't knock, you build that door, you make it happen. And when you leave here, you remember why you came. And it's really important for you guys to look at the person on your left, on your right, or in front of you or behind you, because we will be leading the economies 10, 15 years from now. We will be the next CEO, the next entrepreneur, the next president maybe, the next person to open up a ch uh, chain stores of uh, hotels, the next HR director, finance director, marketing director, freelancer. We will be that next person. So take the opportunity now to network, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever you guys want but take the opportunity to network. Also think about reunions, because this is the opportunity to see how we're doing two, five years, maybe 10 years down the line. 
And overall, guys, this is the Class 2012. Here we are.